This is a video for iPhone 5 users. Um, I think that may also apply to other variants of the iPhone, like the iPhone G. Um, basically, I acquired an iPhone 5 recently from a friend who threw his in the bin because the volume and power buttons and mute button failed. Uh, he took it apart to fix it and got hold of the ribbon cable to change the buttons and there's lots of videos online showing you how to take the phone apart and how to remove the buttons with the ribbon cable but I can't seem to find any video explaining and showing how to actually fit the ribbon cable into the buttons themselves and put them back into the phone um, this is where he failed and where he threw the thing in the bin um, I'm gonna have a go at it basically and try and work it out and film the steps required to do it so that hopefully it can help other people who've managed to take it apart get to the stage where they need to change the ribbon cable from one of these like couple pound kits off ebay and then discovered that it's really difficult and they can't do it so uh, hopefully it might help you out okay okay so here's the gutted phone um, it's already had most of the internals removed um, the ribbon cable is no longer here and here you have the power button the, I think it's mute and then the volume buttons there and here's the replacement ribbon cable kit well it's a, I call it a kit but that's all I get it's just the the cables with the switches in I think you remove some sticky pads fit them into the buttons so first off I'm gonna remove these buttons so I've got all of them out of the phone before fitting them to this cable and uh, then we can look at fitting it back into the phone okay so I have now removed the mute switch and volume buttons from the phone casing as well as the power button okay so the power button has a, a hinged casing when you unscrew it that it will hinge back and then you can remove the the whole piece as the hinge undoes itself at this side that will leave you with just the button in front of that I've also taken that out um, I haven't fitted the power button to the cable yet I've got as far as taking the volume and mute buttons and basically sticking them to the cable the cable comes with peel off tabs that have a leave a glue behind that's supposed to stick the cable to the buttons but I found that the glue was knackered um, so I used a bit of super glue to line them up properly I'm trying to get as good picture as I can here but so the side that has this little shape in the middle of the volume buttons goes on the back side of this cable if I flip it over you can see here are the volume buttons now the, the way you know you've got it in the right place is because there's two little holes here and here here and here and they line up with the holes on the metal plate and the switch is easy because it has three little holes in the piece of metal for three little studs that are on the ribbon cable to click into so that that goes in easy that I had to use glue and line it up it was a little more tricky the next one is the power button again I don't trust the glue that is on the ribbon cable because it was bad quality so I'm probably going to put this into place and then put a tiny little bit of super glue off the end of a screwdriver onto the back of it and let it nearly dry and then put the switch back together which will require putting the button in putting the ribbon cable in position and then closing the hinge back on it which is this piece here 
which is a cover that goes over the back. The only bit I am unsure about so far is the power button itself here. I don't know if you can see this because it's so small. It has a funny little metal hinged piece. Let's see if I can get it through here. There you go. See that little piece of metal? There we go. I don't actually know what that's for. It moves on a little hinge. And, uh,. I don't actually see what that does, so when I put it in, I'll try and work it out. But maybe it hoop, maybe it hoops over the back of the ribbon cable, but I don't really think it does. So I'll, but we'll see. Now, just for a closer look at the volume buttons, these are the holes I mentioned. You can see under the magnifying glass how they line up. So. In the middle you see the little hook there, that's the side that you stick, this is the side that you stick to the ribbon cable. I haven't got three hands so I can't point at it but you can see the holes that line up and then on the other side, that's how it looks. Okay. Now there's something I need to point out here when I went to put mine, my um, volume and mute switch back in, the metal plates that back, go on the back of them, <coughs> originally the volume, it's a bit hard to explain this, but they overlap the screw in the middle that's in the middle of the screen there. That screws both the volume plate and the mute plate into position, and the volume plate was on the inside and I screwed it up and the buttons wouldn't work because it, it was squashing the buttons which means they were already pressed so I then undid the screw and I put the mute switch in first as you can see there and behind it is the volume plate there now I had to do it in that order because that allows the buttons to work they now click when I press them whereas before when the volume plate was in front of the mute plate the plate was pushing against buttons and they were already pressed down without you, you know when it was screwed up so you couldn't actually press the buttons so I guess that must be due to height of the micro switches but that's something you may want to pay attention to Okay, I now have the mute switch in place too. Um, again, the glue was shot on the uh, ribbon cable. The glue it came with was useless. So I put a bit of super glue out on the desk on a piece of paper to let it dry. So it's almost dry, it was sticky. And I uh, scoop up a bit with a tiny screwdriver and dabbed it onto the three studs. And then pushed the ribbon cable back, the switch back into position so it should now dry in place because what was happening is I was using the mute switch and it was just falling out pushing the ribbon cable switch back off the, the casing so I had to glue it okay so the next thing I had to do was to fit the power button which involved putting the actual button in place and from what I could tell, the little metal bar I was describing is at the top there. So you put that up at the top and put the button in place. And it's a bit like one of those where you need three hand situations. Where I had one, f I put the ribbon cable into position first over the little holes you can see next to the camera flash lens. So I put it in the right place and held it down with my thumb the button was already in the casing the difficult bit was getting the hinge on top of all of that which I did using tweezers so I picked up the hinge piece and hooked it in and slid it over and it, after a couple of attempts managed to get that up into position, screw it up tight and uh, the where is it? the button's working so that effectively 
is all three buttons working the switch also works but the super glue is still drying so I'm sorry the lighting isn't very good in here the camera seems to make it dark as soon as it reflects off this silver case but, uh, yeah so that should explain how to fit this fiddly cable in a bit more detail I might try and take a couple macro macro photos of uh, of the switches so you can get a better look now I've just got to work out how to put the rest of the phone together because I didn't take it apart in the first place so uh, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to check out techieheads.com spelled with Z T-E-C-H-Y-H-E-A-D-Z dot com for more techie related videos and advice and